Kia ora guys, it's Michelle here. In this video, I want to talk to you about my rain gear choices for the TA. So, waterproof gear. This is something that can really baffle people. Um, it can be quite a technical area, quite a difficult thing to get your head around if you're not too sure about what the different waterproof ratings are, what the different breathability ratings are, and just what the heck a 2.5 layer fabric really is. So, I'm going to try and cover as much of that as possible in this video, as well as tell you some of the jackets I was considering purchasing and the eventual waterproof gear choices that I've made. Okay, so first off, let's cover the question of what exactly is a waterproof garment? How do we decide whether a garment or a fabric is waterproof at all? Well, that really all comes down to a little test that is known as the hydrostatic head test. So a hydrostatic head test measures quite simply just how waterproof a fabric is. And it can even be done at home if you have the right materials. So just as simple as putting the piece of material that you're testing at the bottom of a long cylinder or a tube, and then slowly filling that cylinder or tube with water. The height of the column of water before water starts to seep out or leak out of the material underneath is basically its hydrostatic head rating. If you can fill that column of water up to 10 or 20,000 millimeters worth of water before the fabric starts to leak, then that fabric has a 10 or 20,000 millimeter hydrostatic head. A 20,000 millimeter hydrostatic head converts to 200 centimeters or roughly 2 meters worth of water on top of that fabric before it will leak. So now that we've covered waterproof ratings, you might have noticed if you've been looking around at waterproof jackets in particular, there are often different types of layers. A waterproof jacket might come in, for example, a two layer design, a 2.5 layer design, or a three layer design. What does this mean? In all three different layered garments, there's generally always an outer layer, which is usually some type of lightweight or durable nylon fabric which is then protected in a number of ways by the inner layers. So a two-layer garment is usually comprised of an outer layer made of that lightweight nylon fabric, which then has a membrane applied to the inside of that fabric to give it its waterproofing. The second layer is made up of a loose liner layer, usually a mesh or a nylon, which then sits inside that outer layer to form the two layers. A 2.5 layer garment is slightly different than that. So instead of having the outer layer and then the loose liner layer inside, it actually combines all of those together in a more lightweight design. So it has the outer layer and then a polyurethane or waterproof membrane applied directly to the inside of that outer layer, and then an additional protective sheen also applied on the inside directly to the outer layer. So effectively it's just one layered garment but it um, has an additional half a layer of the protective sheen coating that they put inside that outer layer. A three layer garment generally comprises all of those together and it is actually a three layered garment. So you have the outer layer of nylon or very durable material to protect yourself from the elements, then there is a membrane in the middle which gives it its waterproofing and then finally a separate liner layer on the inside, again usually comprised of mesh or something like that, to allow the garment to breathe properly. I was effectively tossing up between three different waterproof jackets for the TA and I'm going to go through those three choices now and then tell you why I eventually decided on the option that I did decide on. 
So the first was the Outdoor Research Helium 2 jacket. Now if you know anything about through hiking or long distance trails, especially in the USA, then you'll know that this is generally the jacket of choice for many through hikers. It's lightweight, it's relatively durable, and it has a reasonable waterproofing rating. Weighing in at just about 150 odd grams for a medium sized jacket, the Outdoor Research Helium is made primarily out of a Pertex Shield fabric with a 30D nylon ripstop exterior. It has a number of features, the most obvious of which is the adjustable hood, which comes in really handy. And its waterproof rating is 15,000 mm hydrostatic head. Now the second jacket I was looking at is the Marmot Eco Precip. This is actually a new version of the Precip jacket that Marmot have just recently released, and it's touted as being a lot more environmentally friendly than the previous Precip only version. It has about the same waterproof rating as the Outdoor Research Helium 2, although I couldn't find any information on the Marmot website to confirm this. They do say that the Nano Pro specific Marmot fabric that the jacket is constructed from is waterproof at 10,000 millimeters hydrostatic head as a minimum rating and I'm pretty sure that when I was trying the jacket on in the shops I noticed that it has a 15,000 millimeter hydrostatic head rating on the actual tag of the garment itself. Now despite all of this it weighs in at about 100 grams extra over and above the Outdoor Research Helium 2, just about 250 grams. But it is fully seam taped and just like the Outdoor Research Helium 2 jacket, it's also got the pit zips underneath the arms for added breathability. Now the final jacket I was looking at is the MacPack Traverse Women's Rain Jacket. Now like the Outdoor Research Helium 2, this jacket is also made from Pertex Shield 2.5 layer fabric but it does have a much higher waterproof rating, 20,000 mm hydrostatic head minimum. The main disadvantage of this jacket though is that it does weigh quite a bit more than the other two that I was looking at, coming in at around about 300 grams. Well, drum roll, bum ba da ba, I decided on the MacPack Traverse jacket. Now there were a number of things that went into my decision. I did do a lot of thinking about what I needed the jacket to do and at the end of the day we have some pretty harsh conditions here in New Zealand. So I wanted a jacket that was not only lightweight but that I knew could stand up to those adverse weather conditions without me needing to worry too much about it. I also knew that there is going to be a lot of bushwhacking on the TA, um, places where or anything that I wear is going to be subjected to some pretty harsh conditions and I wanted to make damn sure that my jacket was going to stand up to that and really when I looked at them both the Helium 2 and the Marmot Eco Precip just didn't feel like they were going to stand up to those harsh conditions. Both of them are very lightweight, both of them are incredibly packable but to be honest I just didn't trust them based on a touch and feel test to stand up in our harsh New Zealand environment conditions. So that is in a nutshell why I decided to go with the Traverse. Let's look at some of the features of the Traverse jacket. It is quite a long jacket for still a waist length jacket. So the back part of the Traverse jacket is actually tapered slightly so that it comes down a little bit lower to cover my backside. Now most of the time I'm going to be wearing some sort of rain pant as well um, so I'm pretty much going to be waterproofed from head to toe but just on those occasions where I might be using the jacket as a windbreaker or there might just be a light shower of rain I at least can rest a little bit safer in the knowledge knowing that that jacket comes down a little bit longer at the back. The jacket fits really well, it fits nice and snugly and I actually went up a size in the jacket. I bought a size 10 instead of the normal 8 that I wear just so that I can fit my puffy jacket underneath. I can pull the hood right up on the jacket and the hood even packs away down into the collar when I'm not using it. And some of the great things about the hood include that it's got a nice um, moldable rim or brim on the hood itself. So I can really adjust that to make sure that I'm not getting rain coming in from the side. Uh, it's got some draw cords around the base of the hood as well to cinch it up nice and tightly. The only downside of the hood is that it is quite large, it's helmet compatible, but there's no way of cinching the hood at the back of it to bring it down towards the neck a little bit more and so I find that when I'm hiking with it um, it tends to fall forward and it obscures my vision a little bit. Now a couple of the ways that I've thought about getting around this is by just wearing a cap. 
The second thing I was thinking about doing is sending the jacket back to the MatPat repairs team and asking them to put some sort of velcro or somehow modify the hood so that it doesn't fall forward quite so much. I'll let you know whichever way I decide. It's got a fully velcro adjustable cuffs which allows you to either have it nice and open and airy or if it's really pouring with rain you can cinch it right down to cover your gloves. All the pockets and the main zips of the jacket are YKK AquaGuard which is just an additional waterproofing level for the zips themselves. It does make them a little bit stiff to operate but I'm not too worried about that. The pockets are nice and big and I have a lot of room in them. Be a little bit careful when you're looking at buying a waterproof jacket because sometimes waterproof jackets don't actually come with waterproof zips. Many of them have got storm flaps which basically cover the zip so that no water can get through. But the ones that don't, you just want to make sure that those zips are waterproofed or if they're not, that you're aware that they're not waterproofed so that you can take some additional waterproofing redundancies with you. I think I'm really going to benefit from the nice breathable Pertex Shield lining inside the jacket and also the jacket is completely fully seam taped. I've taken the jacket with me on a couple of hikes now and one time even when it was pouring with basically torrential rain and I'm proud to say that I managed to stay completely dry every time I've taken the jacket out in the rain. One thing I will be doing is making sure that I regularly wash my waterproof jacket so any jacket that is waterproof or has been treated for waterproofing should be washed on average every 10 times of heavy usage. Okay now we've exhausted the topic of jackets let's move on to the waterproof pants that I've recently purchased. Now before I go into what I've purchased I just want to cover a couple of the different options that people might want to use and just address the question of whether or not you might want waterproof pants or any kind of rain pant at all on the TA. So this is a big question that has been asked in a lot of the different um, communities that I am a member of. Probably the most important reason why I like to take my rain pants with me is that I like to be dry at the end of the day when I'm finished hiking. Now of course it depends on how heavy the rain is falling and how long you're actually out in the rain for as to whether or not you're going to still be dry after 8 or 10 hours worth of hiking. If you get a really good pair of waterproof pants and even just a really good waterproof jacket and you're wearing that as your waterproofing system you can pretty much almost guarantee that you are going to be dry at the end of the day. And I think that makes a huge difference to your morale, especially if you're doing something as extensive as a through hike. Rain pants can often act as a really great windbreaking layer. So I hike in the Tongariro National Park on quite a regular basis and even in the summer down here if you get a really clear crisp day um, the wind can really whip up from the south and it can be freezing cold. So it's nice even if you're just hiking in shorts normally to be able to put a pair of rain pants over the top and just take most of that horrible wind chill off. Now on 90 Mile Beach I think this is going to be absolutely a necessity. I've heard a lot about people basically getting sandblasted on 90 Mile Beach. That can be pretty painful if you're just setting out with a pair of shorts and no other base layers. So I am picking that I'm probably going to be wearing my rain pants most of the way on 90 Mile Beach even if it's not raining. And the last thing is just for some additional protection against the harsh conditions that you're going to find in the New Zealand environment. So it's not uncommon for you to need to bushwhack on a New Zealand trail because the trail just hasn't been maintained properly. And I'm expecting that even within the first couple of weeks of being on the trail, I'm going to have to be walking through a lot of bush that just hasn't been maintained for a little while. And that means that you've got scratchy plants, you've got horrible clingy vines, you've got all sorts of stuff that could be scratching up your legs. And you really just don't want to be doing that unless you absolutely have to. Anything that can protect your legs um, in any additional manner is a great option. Now a lot of trampers in New Zealand will use gaiters and most of them will use gaiters that come up to just below their knee. I've never worn gaiters that high before. I have recently purchased a pair of Dirty Girl gaiters to keep most of the stones and rocks and things out of my shoes. In the meantime I wanted to try and use my rain pants as a real multi-purpose set of gear and uh, I'm hoping that it's going to be great for me for wind, great for me for rain and great for protecting my legs from those harsh New Zealand bush conditions. 
Now the rain pants that I actually ended up going with are again another MAC Pack product and this time it's the MAC Pack High Tail Rain Pants. Now these are the top of the line rain pants that MAC Pack sells. They are part of the MAC Pack Alpine series and that means that they have been tested and tried in the New Zealand Alpine conditions. They weigh in at a staggering 140-ish grams which is just ridiculous and they feel incredibly light and packed down to absolutely nothing. But they are still made out of the Protex Shield fabrics. I'm a little bit wary as to whether they're going to uh, rip if I spend a lot of time on my bum or even if I'm walking through some really dense bush whether they're going to stand up very well. Um, but it is completely ripstop fabric and I'm just going to have to come back to you on that and let you know how they go. The pants themselves are waterproof up to 20,000 millimeters, and they also have an incredibly high breathability rating as well. I'm expecting them to be nice and airy. I'm able to completely unzip the bottom of the pants and that obviously helps me if I'm trying to put on a pair of boots. Um, but also it just helps me to get a little bit of airflow through from the bottom of the pants as well if I need to. There is a drawstring around the waist where you can tighten them if need be. And there's also a handy little storage pouch at the front too, which I guess in a pinch you could probably even pack the pants down into. I actually don't need to adjust my rain pants at all. I find that they fit really well even over a base layer and a pair of shorts. The only criticism I do have of them is that they are a little bit on the short side. Uh, once I wear my boots it's fine, they sit nicely over the rim of my boots, but when I've got my trail runners on or any other types of shoes they do sit quite high above the ground and I'm just a little bit concerned that might lead to rain getting into my shoes. Okay guys, so that concludes this video on the waterproof gear I'll be taking with me on Te Araroa. I hope that it's been helpful and it's given you some good information about what waterproofing ratings mean and what sorts of things to look out for in a good waterproof garment. We're getting close to start time now so make sure that you are all set up to follow me on my journey. There's a number of ways that you can do this and if you just head over to my website www.longwhitegypsy.com you'll find all of the links to my social media accounts there and my YouTube channel. Make sure you have subscribed to this channel and make sure to hit that little bell notification to get notified every time I upload a new video. My intention is still to vlog my entire through hike, but it will be a little bit delayed. If you'd like to follow along a little bit more in real time, I have just recently set up a Patreon account. Patreon is a really great platform which allows creators like me to share more information about what I do and more exclusive content with people like you. For as little as a dollar a month, you can sign up to become one of my patrons and get exclusive access to things like behind the scenes posts and photos and also live Q&A sessions directly from the trail. I'll leave all the links for all of that in the description down below, but otherwise guys, happy hiking and I'll catch you next time.